Hey everybody, Rudy here from Take A Bath Productions with another video helping you fix various things. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up and program this RCA 4 device remote control. I'm going to show you how to set up the codes and program it to various devices using three different methods. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Alright, so first things first, you're going to need to install the batteries. They go right here underneath this back cover. We have two AAA batteries here. And also on the back side of the cover, we have a sticker with the model number and a website for code support. That's www.rcacodesupport.com. I'll post that in the description below, as well as some other links, including where to get the remote. If you already have your batteries installed, make sure that they are fresh. You'll be surprised to know just how many comments I get with people having trouble programming the remotes and all it needed was a fresh set of batteries. So if you're having trouble programming the remote, I would start there first. So there's actually four ways to program the remote. Direct code entry, brand code search, auto code search, and manual code search. I'm only going to go through the first three for the sake of time. Okay, let's start with direct code entry. You'll need your code list that came with the remote or consult the aforementioned website to see the codes for your device. Manually turn on the device that you're trying to control. In my case, I'm going to show you how to program a Vizio TV. Find the code on the list for the Vizio TV. My code is 11758. Keep in mind that many devices have several codes listed. In some cases, the first code will work, but only partially. For example, you can turn on the power, but the volume won't work, or the input, or whatever. So if this happens, try the other codes on the list. If that still doesn't work, try the auto code search that I'll talk about a little bit later. Press and hold the device key that you're trying to program to. In my case, I'm going to press the TV. And then with the other hand, Enter 11758. Let go. That's it. If that uh, power light blinks a few times and then shuts off in this when you just did this, it's because you've done something wrong. You either entered a bad code or you let go of the device key or something like that. So try it again. So as I mentioned before, you're going to want to test the code for full functionality. Let's test this code. And we're just going to test code 11758 on the Vizio TV. Power. Power coming back on. Volume up. Volume down. Input. menu yep it's all working good okay that code turned out it worked perfectly but if it didn't try some other codes as I mentioned earlier now you can use the same method to program the other devices your audio amp DVD VCR etc it's the same thing I just showed you so I'm not gonna bother to show you the different devices because it's just gonna be redundant next we're gonna look at the brand code search uh, this can be a fast, easy way to program the remote if your brand is on the list, but there's only a few select brands, so this might not be for you. There's like five codes each of TV, audio, DVD, and ten codes of satellite and cable brands listed. But if your brand is on the list, manually turn on the device that you're trying to program to, find the code list that came with your remote, and find the section that gives the brand codes. Then we're going to press and hold the device key. In my case, we're doing a TV again. Press the power button. The LED will go out. Wait for it to come back on. There it goes. Came back on. Now, look at the brand code list and get your code off of the list. Mine happens to be 4. Okay, press 4. Now, push the power button. Did the TV turn off? Yes, it did. Push stop. 
Okay, I'm not going to push stop, but if it did, push stop. If it didn't, press power again, press power again. And what this doing is, is it's sending out a different code that's for the Samsung or the uh, Vizio. Make sure you wait about two seconds between presses. Okay, up, oh, the TV turned off. Now, push stop to store the code. All right, so that's how you do that. Then what you do is you push power and then go through the functions. As I mentioned earlier, make sure all the functions work. If it doesn't, say that was the fourth time I pushed power. Next time, don't stop on the fourth time. Wait until you have another response. It might be the fifth time and then press stop and then try that again to see if you have functionality or not. If you don't, if you've exhausted all the codes, then throw the remote out the window and call it a day. Next, we're going to talk about the auto code search. Using the auto code search, the remote will cycle through all available codes in a device category. When you find one that works, you can stop the search and store the code. So manually turn on the device that you're trying to control. I'm going to show you how to do a TV again, but this will work on these other buttons too. It doesn't matter. Push TV. The power light comes on. Press power. The light goes out. The light came back on. All right, so press play. What that's doing is it's sending out a batch of 10 codes. Make sure you keep the remote pointed at the device the whole time. If you point the remote away from the device and it's sending out codes, the device might not see the code and then you went past the code and you didn't even know it. So keep it pointed at the device the whole time. Okay, that was 10. Send out another batch. No response. All right. Oh, we had a response that time. Okay, so it's somewhere between 20 and 30 is where I got my response at. So back it up. This is uh, going through the 10 codes that you just put out, and it's backing them up one at a time. There's three, still no response. Four, no response. Okay, five, we had a response. So that's the 25th code. The TV turned off. Hit stop to store the code. Now you're going to want to test the uh, functionality of that code to make sure it works. If everything works, you're good to go. If it didn't work, you have to repeat this procedure again. Next time, don't stop on the same code. Make sure you pass that code until you get a response from the next code after that. And then test that code again and see what the functionality is. All right, so that's how you do the auto code search. Next, I wanted to talk about the volume punch through. This allows the volume to be controlled on the TV or audio device no matter what device is selected. There's actually nothing to program on this. The volume punch through sends the volume commands to the last device that you were controlling, either the TV or the audio soundbar before the active device that you were currently controlling. Um, what that means is, is if you're controlling the soundbar before you started controlling your Apple TV or streaming device, the volume will automatically control the soundbar. If you were controlling the TV before the streaming device, then the volume will automatically control the TV. Um, it just flip-flops back and forth according to whatever you were, you were controlling last, and that's this how that works. So that's about it, guys. This remote will do a couple of other things, but you can consult the manual for those other features. If you enjoyed this video, click on the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. Thanks for watching.